Hello, so welcome back. Uh, this is week two. We're going to be making some rocking rock cakes. Uh, it's a very sunny day, so everything's been illuminated by the sun today. I hope you had some fun baking last week. Uh, thank you to those of you who've contacted me with your pictures and things like that, or just send me a message to say how they turned out. That's great. I'll keep this video quite short. I'm aware that last one it was like sort of 20 minutes, so I'll try and keep this as quick as I can. I'm going to take you through this recipe, uh, rock and rock cakes, and I'll show you everything you need to do. You can follow along with me again, or you can just simply print out the recipe and follow this. This is great, really easy to follow. Right, let's have a look at our ingredients and things like that. So first things first, you're going to need scales to measure things out. You'll need a sieve, uh, so very handy that for sieving your flour. You'll need an egg and something to mix the egg in. So I've got a jug. Jug's very good because you've got a nice uh, pourer there. You can do it in a bowl, but it's easier to pour with this. Some fruit. In the recipe it says uh, about using dried fruit, mixed fruit, but I really like cranberries, so I'm going with my cranberries. A couple of spoons for getting your mixture onto the baking tray at the end. Some sugar, um, some butter, and some flour. Now, I've actually made half the amount because I didn't fancy having too many rock cakes, uh, but if you're a large family and you fancy making more, then you can double the recipe. It's entirely up to you. So I've actually only used half the amount. So this here is 100 of flour and about 37 grams of butter and sugar. Okay, so it's up to you how much you use. Either double the amount or halve it. Entirely up to you. Good spoon for mixing, always useful. I like these silicone ones, they, they work really well. Uh, a whisk for whisking your egg, um, or you can use a fork. I actually prefer a fork, um, but it's totally up to you. And then last of all, you'll need a baking tray with some baking paper. So, without further ado, we shall get started. So I've preheated the oven to uh, 220, that's what it says on the recipe. That's gas mark seven. So if you have got an, an oven at home, and you need to get it on before you cook this because basically it needs a bit of time to heat up. So, sift the flour into the bowl is the first thing. I've already done that. So, the best way to sieve your flour, put your flour into the sieve and then just gently bang it against your hand like this. And you should find it doesn't go everywhere. If you start shaking the sieve around, it can go everywhere. So, that's the best way to do it. Okay. Once you've done that, it says rub the fat into the flour. So here's our fat, and it's the same as uh, last time. We're going to rub that in with our fingers, and it's the same technique. You're just using your fingertips here, and you're gonna rub it in so that it resembles breadcrumbs. So I'm gonna do that, and we'll cut back in a minute when I've rubbed it in. Great, how to test, give it a tap. There's no uh, blobs of fat left, so I'm quite happy with that. Hopefully you can see, as I say, it's a bit sunny. So, next job is to add our sugar. So I'll pour that in, there we go. And you can give it a little stir. It doesn't really matter what you stir it with, as long as it's mixed up together. I could have used my hands, but I've just washed them again. So, there we go. And that's nicely mixed, okay. So yeah, just a reminder for you, I'm sure you've washed your hands already, but at the start of every cook, you should always wash your hands. So if you're in my cooking room at school, it would be the first thing you do is you come in and you wash your hands and then we gather around and I show you what we're going to be cooking. So, but hopefully you will have remembered that and you will have done that. So, I've made a little well in the middle, that is for our egg, but I'm not just going to put our egg in there like that, I'm going to whisk it first. So I'm just going to put this away to one side, lovely. Here is a mixing bowl and crack the egg in, best way few taps just to make a bit of a, a split in the side there, a bit hard to see in the sun I know. There we go. And then I use my thumbs and I push them in like this, but over the bowl. So I push them in and pull apart and you should end up with a perfect cracked egg there. Give it a little shake and we'll get rid of that. Just check there's no shell in there. If there's any shell, remove it with something like a fork or a spoon, it's entirely up to you. You need to whisk it, so you can use one of these or as I prefer, you can use a whisk. So I'm going to stand here and do it because it's a nice big bowl. So make a bit of noise. So you're trying to put some air into it when you do this. So the technique is to come round in little loops so that you're aerating the egg. Just like that. 
bit hard to see, I appreciate, but there we go. That's what you need to do. And then we'll pour this into the middle. Lovely, in it goes. Excellent. Now, it does get a bit messy, so I think it's probably better to use one of these mixing, these silicone mixing things. If you don't have one, a wooden spoon is perfectly okay, or you can use a metal spoon, it's entirely up to you. But I probably wouldn't use my fingers just yet. So, let's give it a little mix. We can fold it in, so I'm just rolling it around gently. Bearing in mind it's, it's quite loose, so if you go like mad, it'll fly everywhere. So just go slowly, it should pull it together quite nicely. And once this is mixed, we should end up with sort of a cookie dough mixture. So it should resemble something that looks quite firm, but it won't be loose like a cake. It shouldn't be particularly thin. Okay, so it's coming together. So then it says to use two spoons to divide the dough into rocks. This is almost mixed, so we're nearly there. I'm just going to get my spoon clean that off. Lovely, lovely. Look at that. These are good for scraping out the bowl afterwards as well, but I'm not quite there yet. So I'm just going to use these, give it a bit of a push around, and there we go. Right, now I think I'm ready to add my cranberries. So I'll take those. And I could have weighed these, but I'm just going to dip by eye. I quite like my cranberries. So that should be about 75 grams if you're following the recipe. But if you're not following the recipe and you've halved it, then it should be half that. So I've done about 20 grams there, perhaps. If you want it particularly fruity, you can add some more. That's okay. Right, I think I need to get my hands in there just to see what it's like. So I'm going to clean my spoons off like that. Put my hands in. So I've got clean hands, so I've just washed them yet again, there we go. And just use one hand just to move it around, manipulate it in the bowl, and you should end up with a nice blob like that. It's a bit sticky, I have to say, but you can take two hands and rub it. If I take the bowl out of the way. Take two hands and rub it like this, and you should have quite a firm blob. At this point, you can use two spoons, or if you have it in your fingers, you can break it into some smaller chunks like this and then it's going to go onto our baking tray it's our baking sheet here so there we go so it says um, to put it into the oven for about 15 to 12 minutes so I'm going to do that now and then we shall see what it looks like when it comes out okay it's been in for 12 minutes something like that so I'm going to use my trusty pro uh, hopefully you remember what temperature what temperature was it 75, that's correct. If you didn't get that right, we'll just pretend you did. Um, so I'll open the oven. Yeah, they look good. If we have a look, look inside, they're nice and golden brown. And if I pull them out, I put the probe in and see. Yeah, 80, so that's good. Also, it's you're looking for cleanness. So when you pull it out, there shouldn't be any cake stuck to it like that. So that tells me that the outside is cooked. So I'd say the outside of this is, I'm just going to shut the door, it's better. The outside of this is, is nicely dextronized and the, the, yeah, the flower has turned a nice brown colour, but from the inside it's still quite soft. That's because I made mine quite large. I quite like these to be nice and big, but really for the recipe you should be making eight of these. I used half the quantity, so this should have made four. So I've been a bit greedy and made some really big ones here, so what would have been better so if I made four and gave them 12 minutes. Also, I've turned my oven down a little bit because I could see they were cooking a bit quickly. So if you put yours in the oven and after about five minutes, they're already going brown, turn your oven down, it's too hot. Check them after 12 minutes. If the spoon, or sorry, spoon, if the knife comes out and it's clean, then that's good and they're cooked. If you have one of these, check it one of, one of these as well, temperature probe. Um, but I'm going to pop this back in for a couple of minutes and I'm sure they'll be fine in, in two or three minutes. Little tip for you just before I go, desiccated coconut. If you can get some desiccated coconut, it's brilliant in these. It gives it a really nice flavour. And the other thing you can do is before you put it in, put a spoon of jam into the middle and that will cook and make a really nice jammy 
uh, sweet center. So my uh, amazing rock cakes for you. What did I call them? Rocking rock cakes. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next week for another cook. Bye for now. Hello. So I just thought I'd show you how this uh, bake turned out actually. So I've got two nice rock cakes here and I've broken this one already so you can see. I don't know if you can see that. It's nice and light and fluffy. Nice amount of fruit in there as well. So it's soft in the middle. Mmm, delif smells delicious. I'm gonna have a bit in a second. And it's nice and crispy on the outside, but it's not too hard. I'd recommend eating these quite quickly. I'm sure they won't hang around for long anyway, um, but they do tend to go quite hard within a day or so. Um, so certainly if you make these, eat them when they're slightly warm from the oven. Leave them to cool, eat them when they're warm. A little bit of jam, a little bit of cream if you've got any, or just as they are, they're beautiful. So, um, and as I say, top tip, add some coconut, or a mixture of fruit for an even nicer uh, rock cake. Anyway, enjoy your rock cakes and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.